Hi all. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to talk. So I'm going to talk about cabling knots in overtwisted contact manifolds, and this is a joint work with John Itnayer, Hun Kim Min, and Anupam Mukherjee. So I'll start by defining a contact structure. A contact structure on a three manifold is a nowhere integrable two plane field. There are two types of contact structures, tight and overtwisted. So if there exists an overtwisted disk embedded in the manifold, we call it overtwisted. And here is a picture of an overtwisted disk. As you can see, along the boundary of the disk, the contact planes are tangents. Now, a knot is Legendrian if it is everywhere tangent to the contact structure. There are two types of knots in an overtwisted manifold, loose and non-loose. A knot is loose if its complement is overtwisted, otherwise we call it non-loose. There are two classical invariants of a Legendrian knot. The first one is the thurston benequin number. The thurston benequin number measures the difference between cipher framing and contact framing. And the second one is the rotation number, uh, which is the winding number of the tangent vector field with respect to the trivialization of C. Okay. Now our motivational question is, how does a Legendrian knot behave under satellite operations? And these are the three operations we are concerned about. Connect sum, cabling, and white doubling. But for today, I'll just focus on cabling. Now, PQ cable of a knot type K is the isotopy class of the knot of slope Q over P on the boundary of the solid torus that represents the knot type. And the pictures are the patterns, the positive cable pattern and the negative cable pattern. Itner and Honda started the study uh, with cable, uh, the cable knots in S3Z standard. And they showed that the structure theorems for cable knots are not really simple. And they rely on the property, which is a uniform thickness property. And this uniform thickness property is a very specific property for knots in tight contact manifolds. And uh, a knot satisfies uniform thickness property if you take a tubular neighborhood of the knot, and if we can thicken that neighborhood to the neighborhood, which is the max TV neighborhood. I know this is a very vague definition, but I do not really want to go into the details. So let's see how cabling knots uh, are interesting in uh, overtwisted manifold. So if we take a loose knot and we want to cable it, it's very easy because there is an overtwisted disk disjoint and we can always do the cabling operation uh, away from the overtwisted disk. So the cable knot is also loose. So nothing interesting is happening. Now, what about cables of non-loose knot? This is an interesting problem because we have example where uh, if you take a non-loose knot and if you do the cabling, it becomes uh, loose. And also the tools and techniques that work for tight manifolds do not necessarily work for overtwisted manifold. And they should not be very surprising because the geometry is so different. So our first theorem, this says that if we have a non-list representative um, in a contact structure, and uh, if the cabling slope is greater than the thurston benefit number uh, for positive cables, then the cable will be non-loose. Now, how does the proof work? Very briefly, uh, the first thing is to realize the cable as a ruling curve on the standard neighborhood. So once we do that, the second step is to apply the state transition technique. The state transition technique is, uh, uh, has been done before, uh, used before uh, by Itna and Honda in their several of their papers, they use this technique. And by using this technique, uh, we actually prove that if the, if the cable is uh, loose, if you start with uh, this assumption that the cable is loose, then by using the state transition technique, we can uh, reach to this contradiction that the knot we started with is also loose. Uh, and that's very briefly uh, the idea of the proof. Uh, so now what happens if the cabling slope is less than the thurston benefit number? Now notice that this situation can arise if we are thinking about uh, negative cabling. 
but the problem here is that the, the technique which we used for the positive case uh, do not really work for this case. So what we had to do is to introduce an extra condition. So with that extra condition, our second theorem is that if we have a non-loose representative of a knot type, such that it has a non-loose transverse push-off. In that case, uh, for the cabling slope less than or equal to the thurston benefit number, the cable knot is non-loose. And I should mention here uh, that uh, not every non-loose Legendrian has a non-loose transverse push-off. An example will be the unknot. So if a non-loose Legendrian knot has a non-loose transverse push-off, then all of its cable will be non-loose. Um, and this is all I want to say today. Uh, thanks for listening.